Welcome back, everyone, to Yellowstone Season 5 Walkthroughs and Discussions, where we walk you through key points of each episode and also discuss some of them. In this episode, we're walking you through Season 5, Episode 3, titled A Tall Drink of Water. So this episode starts us off with a flashback showing a young Rip and young John Dutton riding on horseback up a ridge where they soon discover some sort of dead animals, which the paw prints they see are huge. We're talking twice the size of normal wolves, as they state in this episode. Just a little bit further along in the episode, they mentioned that these wolves probably were either migrating down from Canada or have been introduced to Montana from Canada. And then in the next scene, we're back to present day as Beth and John sit and have a sad recollection about their mom, John Dutton's late wife that passed away in previous episodes where it showed a flashback of her accident riding horses. Beth tells her dad that he needs to get over it as her memory is not going anywhere, but he needs to find someone that he can love while he still can. Then in a next scene, we see Casey Dutton telling Chief Rainwater that he wants to try a different path in life and shows him that he is giving up his job in law enforcement for Wyoming as he will no longer be assisting his dad as head livestock officer. Chief Rainwater then responds by saying he can't really think of anything he could do because they do not want them policing their people. However, he might could become the state's lead investigator, which they have not had one in over 10 years. We then see Casey Dutton asking his father, John Dutton, if they can bury their recently deceased son on their property. He says that his wife wants to be able to view their son anytime that she wants. And of course, John Dutton agrees and says, that's okay, of course it would be okay. And then we see a scene where Chief Rainwater is pulling up to his casino only to find out that there is a big protest going on outside of it and they have to sneak him in the back to get in the casino without drawing in any attention. And then in the next scene, we see Angela Blue Thunder threatening to take Chief Rainwater's position on the res. In the next important scene we have, we see the wildlife fish and game officers approaching Rip at the Dutton Ranch, asking them about the wolf collars that had recently disappeared if you can remember in episode two, it ended with the collar getting hung up in the river still on the Dutton Ranch property. Once the officers talk to Rip, they make him go on a horseback ride to try and help them find out where these wolves are or what may have possibly happened to them. Once they make it to the exact place where the wolves were killed, Rip throws them off by saying, if you plan on taking horses up that ridge, it has killed many of men and you better be careful or take a helicopter. They end up agreeing with Rip and decide to take a helicopter instead of further investigating the land that they were at, which is where the wolves were missing. So Rip did a good job of making the police not really search right there and find what they were looking for. And in the next important scene, we see Beth having a business meeting with Rob and she is basically giving him a sweetheart deal of all the assets she has acquired with the Schwartz and Meyer firm. The only catch is she wants access to the land still. He can have the rest of the assets and funds. After hearing this deal, Rob says to Beth, there has to be some sort of rattlesnake in this deal, so tell me what it is. And then she lays it down to where Schwarzenmeier is going to be suing her and that basically means that she's not going to be able to walk around, walk all over Rob as she does everyone else. So he will have control of the assets and money generated while she will just have access to the land. 
So this news reaches the Schwarzenegger group and they plan to fight back even though their headquarters in New York wants them to move back to New York and quit fighting for this fight. They say they do not want to fight for bad money using good money. So afterwards, Beth decides to get the bunkhouse to go to the bar to celebrate Lloyd's birthday and her secret deal with the Schwarzenegger group that she has not disclosed yet, the deal that she made with Rob, giving him all of the money and assets while she still has control of the land. While at the bar, Rip sees an actual cowboy at the bar, which he says doesn't happen anymore, and goes and tells him hey and buys him a drink. After that, he ends up walking back and watching everyone dance. That is when a woman comes up to him and asks where his wife is. Beth sees them talking, and you know what happens when Beth gets angry. An all-out brawl ends up happening in this bar as she breaks her beer over this woman's head, and then Beth starts fighting the woman, and then the whole bar starts fighting each other. Then we see in the next scene that the cops have showed up and have everybody outside speaking to them, and Beth again hits the woman. After everything has calmed down, she still hits the woman outside with the cops right there. So they then put her in handcuffs, which makes Rip approach them and say, you know who that is, don't you? The officer replies, yes, I do, but she still has to be arrested. Which Rip replies, well, if you arrest her, you know that's going to be trouble for you. And then that's how the episode ends. So honestly, I would rate this episode, episode three, probably give it a strong 7-6. It's a pretty interesting episode. However, it was not as jam-packed as some episodes we have seen in the past as far as action scenes and things that make you say wow. So a 7.6 for this episode. Still a great series, still a great episode. Let me know what you think of this episode in the comments below. Have a good one.